So you're probably familiar with the Modern Warfare store and how many changes it's received over the past year, including interface changes and being able to buy most bundles to the Armory directly. But, unless you played the game during Season 0 or been on Card Tracker, you likely did not even know the hidden skins that have been found in the files all this time. Now these skins look slightly familiar, as pretty much all the skins we're going through today are practically retextures of released ones, but I figured we can comment on each skin, what type of bundles they could debut, and why some might have been cut. Now before I begin, a few things worth mentioning. Firstly, I must give credit to Card Tracker for extracting images of these skins from the game's files, as they will be edited together in the video for good purposes. Secondly, these unreleased skins have been spotted before, so I'll be referencing both the Modern Warfare Spec Ops trailer and one of my older Modern Warfare videos from a year ago that showcases these skins being executed. And lastly, I cannot promise any of these skins will be coming to the game, as much as I as several of you would prefer them to be released. It's possible that some or all these skins maybe have been deleted as part of patches that optimize the game's performance or reduce the file size. As Modern Warfare's life cycle progressed, it, it, it got a little... You know, a huge update, so we they probably removed some of these skins, but who knows. Then again, some skins have been released as a reward for completing Spec Ops missions with modified difficulty. Now, with all this stated, let's finally dive into these skins here. First up, we have Alice's Mudden and Smart Tactical Skins, both of which are modeled after the release Demon Dogs and Boss Lady outfits. Now, the Smart Tactical Skin is shown here in this footage. You can see the stock blue appearance has a more aggressive tactical uniform in the field, but the Mudden Skin is one I don't really have footage for. Uh, the color pattern for this skin seems to stick to mauves and tans, which would not blend in nearly anywhere in Warzone except for maybe the train station, if we're talking about how viable it'll be. What's even funny about these skins is their release counterparts are extremely rare. Uh, the Boss Lady, which is the green version of this, and more skins, they're available in bundles, but they lack a blueprint, meaning you can't buy it directly via the armory. The only way you could buy them is if they pop up in the store, and the War Compact for one has only made an appearance in the store twice in total, for only, I think it was only one day in Season 2, and about one day five months ago from today, but these are Alice's skins, wouldn't really expect many to run these. Moving on to Azur with the Middle Eastern approach in his Desert Bond in Sunbleach skins. I do not have footage of these skins, but as I've said, these are skins with texture variants from the originals. Now the base skin these are based off of is one from the Arms Dealer bundle, which does contain an AK blueprint, and the available skin is called the Arms Dealer, same as the bundle name. The Desert Bandit variant is more of a minimalistic version of the Arms Dealer, with there being more greys and drab colours, whilst the Sunbleach goes in the opposite direction with this vibrant yellow and sleek black plate carrier and ammunition pouches. In terms of the practicality of these skins in a tactical environment, I would say the Azir Cave or Euphrates Bridge would probably be ideal for some bleached, but not really much else, especially not with Warzone's Verdansk, which is void of the desert. Now for my personal favorite cut skins, Bell's Bleached and Urban Casualty are the only two he has. They are based off of the Agent Orange skin from the Huntsman pack available in the store now, as well as the super rare Spetsnaz pack that only appeared for one day in the store back in Season 2, which had a Marpite camouflage variant of these uniforms. I really wish that pack would come back, but has no blueprint, so you can't really buy it directly anyways. Now, here's footage of the Urban Casualty skin, and this is my truly favorite bail skin because the texture of the uniform resembles the Ghost Urban TF-141 uniform from Modern Warfare 2, before we got it, of course, uh, but the color scheme is the same, where there's the desert multicam trousers and the gray top. Now, as for the bleach skin, what I find fascinating about this one is how similar it resembles Bale's Protectorate skin from his security detail bundle. Uh, the trousers, just like the Protectorate skin, are white and the jacket and plate carrier are nearly the exact same color with a few variations between the two, but this could probably give a reason as to why you may not see the bleach skin in the future. However, this should be a proper cause for having the store that lists out all the bundles, as there's a lot of money Activision is losing in this area. Now, Charlie has a plethora of cut skins, starting off from the left to the right. The Clouded and Tundra skins are retextures of her released Hunter skin from the Night Stalker bundle, and the Carbon Ash and Gratitude skins are more realistic and militaristic versions of her Angel of Death skin from the Deathbringer bundle. Not really much to comment on here, other than her grassroots skin being the most ideal in the Warzone environment, despite bits of her skin showing. Uh, the Tundra skin is shown in the footage, and you'll notice that she will stick out like crazy with the Arctic trousers Charlie has on. Not a very pertinent bundle for Warzone or tactical setting aside from maybe Meow Store, uh, but these are her unreleased skins. D-Day sports two variants of his tailgate skin from the Texan bundles, which are the Camel Croc and Scarecrow skins. What's odd about these is that a retexture of this character model was made specifically for the 4th of July pack, rather than releasing either one of these two skins. This basically means that Infinity Ward has acknowledged the existence of these unreleased skins. Um, now, both are just slightly different levels of contracts and brightness, but there's really nothing too different about these skins, nothing really to drive home at all. Now this may appear funny as a shock or two, but Domino only actually has one skin that's as unreleased. Now, you're probably familiar with this model type from the Warzone Shining, but the Warzone model actually was not the original version of this skin at all despite it getting released first. 
This hardened skin is actually what the Warzone variant and the Desert Ops variant, which is in the bundle, are based upon despite Harden being unreleased. I know this due to the skin appearing for a few short frames in the Modern Warfare Spec Ops trailer, as you can tell by the signature red kerchief and red gloves in contrast to the Warzone blue scarf and black gloves. But this was an interesting find nonetheless. Now, Golem is up there with Bale, in my opinion, for burst unreleased skins. Uh, his Ice Cold and Swamp Fever skins are retextured of the rare Season 1 Foliage skin from the Tracker Bundle, and his Spectral Assassin and oddly named Winter Warrior skins are retextured with Golem's actual Winter Warrior skin, which is the full white ghillie suit available now. Now, since I used to main the Golem Foliage skin, I found that the retextured variants of Ice Cold and Swamp Fever don't really do Golem as much justice as terms of, you know, for camouflaging. Uh, his ice cold skins, red palette shown here, doesn't really blend in practically in any form of raw grass in the game, just the same way as Grinch's red blonde the water ghillie suit doesn't. Um, the lack of face paint in the Swamp Fever skin emits too much skin to be hidden as well, making foliage in the war conversion slightly more superior. Now, Golem Spectral Assassin would have probably been a great choice for the grasslands in the nighttime royale mode, uh, but his falsely named Green Warrior skin is actually a full body ghillie, making it possibly the best skin for blending into the environment for Golem, or even in the game. With there being no skin showing and the green blending in well with the grasslands, however, I have not the slightest as to the idea as to why this name is a duplicate of the already released variant. Golem's Allegiance counterpart, Grinch, has two noteworthy skins that are retextures of the Blood and the Water skin and the pre-order All Gilded Up variant, which Infinity Ward added a ridiculous pale yellow scarf to the jaw, just to make it stick out further, practically defeating the fucking purpose. Now, the Bog and Muddy Waters might be possibly the best camouflage skin in the game as far as grassland tactics are concerned, assuming they're modeled after the All Gilded Up full body ghillie suit, and not the Blood and the Water upper torso variant. Uh, the only way you'd likely notice these skins without a heartbeat sensor or snapshot is by being far enough to wave for the grass not to render, but to still show these skins hiding in the grass where it would be. Uh, maybe this is the reason why these skins weren't released, or we may potentially see one of them as a Spec Ops reward in the future. Everyone's favorite Trehawk Cougar has two variations of his Reaper skin from the Low Marauder bundle, those being the Banner and Plague variants. Now, as an MP tryout who doesn't really main Cougar but uses his Reaper skin, I would have to say either remaining with Reaper or using Bandit or Ideal, especially for flanking in darker areas and maps and alleys like Pickle Dickle. Uh, the yellow face netting on the Plague skin sticks out quite a bit, and though I don't really have footage of these skins in action, it doesn't leave much to the imagination for why they would not use this skin. Otto's Amphibious Pax TF141 skin has two variations with slight discolorations added, those being the Demolitions Expert and Jungle skins respectively here. Now, I recently switched to maining Otto's TF141 skin. Uh, he resembles a coalition version of Kruger, but more tactical, but the Demolitions Expert being all black can be seen here, and this may be able to blend in more in the nighttime, I'd say. I don't really know for sure. I mean, hell, I might even give the Season 5 Battle Pass Rose skins a run for their money in terms of usefulness. Uh, the Jungle skin, however, does not really appear to be much more camouflaged than the TF141 skin. It actually looks like a replica of it, rather, aside from the last texturing. Now, this was something you all were likely not expecting, and neither was I. Now, this could be an issue in the files, but the Card Tracker site has the Season 4 Dead of Night skin for Captain Price and the Deep Dive skins listed separately. Uh, more importantly, the unreleased Deep Dive skin has the ranking of Base, meaning it comes standard with the Operator. What's generally odd, however, is that both preview images don't harness face paint when the in-game Dead of Night skin has distributed face paint on Price's face. Now, this deep dive skin may have been a leftover placeholder, or just simply an issue in general, so we'll likely never know. Reigns has two unreleased variants of his Outback skin from the Heavy Hunter bundle, those being the Mariner and Road Rage skins. These skins are more suitable for Warzone due to the Outback's hat and tank top being a blindingly light white, whereas these skins, whilst not perfect for those conditions, are much more feasible. These skins actually seem as though they give inspiration to the new Thorn skins released this season as part of the Battle Pass. Sid has two variants of her useless ghillie suit from the Emerald Ranger bundle, with the skins being the Brushfire and Thunderbird. What's peculiar about the skins is how the top half of the ghillie under her mandible is a distinct material from the rest of the suit, which appears to be made of some synthetic paper-like substance. Uh, the Brushfire skin would be the most advantageous in the northern brushes in a map such as Hill, but little other use for these skins will exist due to the head not having any garments that could break her figure's shadow. This really defeats the purpose of her ghillie if you really think about it. Thorn actually has unreleased skin, and I, like many of you, likely thought he had too, since his Inked Infiltrator skin from Season 1 was well known. But it turns out the skin we perceived to be unreleased was actually released last season as a Spec Ops reward named Security, which has green face paint and darker green gloves. This unreleased skin, La Muerte, is an odd skin when compared to the Security one because the black face paint does not provide much more of an advantage in many engagements than the Security or Inked Infiltrator skins do. Too much skin is showing, and all variants have a white tank top underneath, 
making these stolen skins prone to many unexpected gunfights. Yego has three skins, one of which is modeled after the cream suit from the Spec Ops reward, as well as the commuter skin from the Mother Russia bundle. This unreleased skin is shown here and is called the Cool Blue, which sports the same vest as the two skins I previously mentioned, but with different colored trousers as if he was visiting a polo club. This is the only variant of the Eagle suits that has a color difference between the blazer and trousers, which I find very intriguing. What's more is Eagle's variations of the Nightlife skin, which I used to main, respectively be named Out of Town and Sunday Best. The Nightlife skin was released due to the nature of Eagle's shades, whereas these skins likely never saw a lot of day to the Eagle looking like a respectable bookworm without the filled-in shades. The skins themselves are wholly different from each other, as the Sunday Best has a slightly more of a crimson embellishment on the leather. Uh, this skin makes me question why we couldn't just have all three of these skins in a mission as part of the bundle like we did for the Gaz Bundle. And last but not least, Zane has four unreleased skins based off of Monsoon Season and Pepper Dawn from Season 1 respectively, named Bolsa Green, Vigilante Glitch, and Zebra Print. The Bolsa Green and Vigilante are darker variants of the Monsoon Season's tan scheme, making them more advantageous when not playing in a desert environment. Uh, but the Parker variants of Glitch and Zebra do not contribute much in the environment, really. Uh, zebra Print, though not well visible, actually has white trousers with the zebra stripes on them. So if you want to be like that pink Iskra skin from the fucking last season, then all of that is for you. And that wraps up the showcase of unreleased skins in Modern Warfare. Did any particular skin or skins so happen to interest you? Anyone you'd avoid at all costs? Let me know down below, and here's to hoping that Infinity Ward, or Activision, or whomever releases a more ergonomic way of buying bundles for those who wanted specific skins than what we had now. With that being said, I'm Cyblox, I'm signing out, and hopefully you stay safe out there.